morning. Welcome to Newsmakers 1490 WDAN. Linda Bolton in the studio. Yes, I am back after a wonderful trip to Tyler, Texas. Never expected to be in Tyler, Texas, but I was there. My cousin out in Oregon, her oldest daughter, got a master's degree. So it was a great time for uh, for Janet and uh, her, young, uh, her youngest daughter, Jameson, and granddaughter, Chloe. That's Kristen's graduated. That's her daughter. And then uh, Kristen's dad from Colorado, so... Uh, who was Wilbur's roommate in college. It's all kind of weird, kind of connected. But anyway, we all gathered in, in Tyler, Texas, and we had a wonderful time. And I thank Eric uh, from the bottom of my heart for doing such a great job of handling things. And yes, I do have a cold, and that's why I sound this way. I'm not ready to cry. I'm probably ready to cough. So just bear with me, and I will do the very best that I can. And try to remember how this show works. Um, so with me this morning, Jake Aurelian. Jake has been here numerous times to talk about his videos and his projects and all that. Well, one of the things that Jake has been really involved in lately is the farmer's market downtown. And uh, because of our association, we had a conversation and the farmer's market is returning to the library. And I'm really excited about that. So also here, man, I'm really talking bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we'll do the best we can. Uh, Jessica Augustin is here. She's outreach director, is that? Yes. Okay. And also here is Dustin Danger, musician. Me. yeah. And a cook who accidentally <laughs> cut his thumb. So that's why he's yes. not playing guitar this morning. No music today. <laughs> no so. music. No music. So good morning to you all, and thank you for being here. So, Jake. Yeah. Thanks for having us back. Absolutely. Talk to us a little bit about this whole idea, this whole concept you had. Well, it started about two years ago approximately when the farmers market at the library moved up north and I felt as though that was leaving a void downtown especially for the elderly people who were our steady customers so um, I approached downtown with the idea of Saturday morning summer sounds and farmers market which is kind of like a lower key version of their Friday night summer sounds with acoustic musicians and then we would have all of our farmers market vendors there so we were at the Kresge Park across from Cafe 13 for two seasons and it worked out really well. We grew every year, but um, it was, you know, maybe about six, nine months ago or so that um, we decided, we started, I don't know, I just started thinking that maybe we had outgrown, we were going not going to grow as much as much as we could if we remained at the Kresge. A little bit more confined space yes, there. Yeah. Yes, yes. And, um, we had had several conversations before, you know, whenever I did your show, we had talked about various things. And one of the things that you had mentioned was that the stage of the library wasn't being used as much as, as everyone had would, hoped that it would be. And that kind of stuck in my mind. So when we got the idea to maybe look for other venues, my first choice was the library. And um, quite frankly, if I had known back two years ago that the library still wanted a market there, I would have gone approached the library immediately. Yeah, it was a, it was a situation where it was, you know, they, they were more comfortable moving on, and that's fine. Uh, everybody has to, you know, the change is, is, is just common. The problem with that was uh, the stage. Julius Hegler had been very generous to the library and had uh, donated that stage that was constructed, and it's a lovely little stage. It's it really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's you can't do a huge production, but it's good sized, and you can entertain, mm -hmm. and you can do small play things, one act plays, things like that. And it was just going to waste. Yeah. And so we're thrilled to have you folks back and open up mm -hmm. the opportunity to use the stage. Well, so. I'm, I'm, I know that I'm very happy. We're all very happy. And I want to personally thank you for, for helping us return to the library and the library board and Teresa at the library and Jessica and Jennifer. They've all been really instrumental in making this happen. And I'm happy to work together again. I think it'll be really great for everyone involved. And we're kicking it off this Saturday. And the first performer on the stage will be Dustin Danger. Hopefully his thumb will be <laughs> healed say, at that point. Is your, is your thumb going to be playable? <laughs> I'll be good, yeah. So, I never cancel, so uh, yeah. well, and, okay. and, I'm looking forward to it. And the cool thing is, he'll be bringing some of his Rebels Fair collect collective students with him to perform. Explain and, that. Um, so I'm a full-time musician, so I uh, teach out of my home. I have over 40 students. I've got a good handful of them coming um, Saturday. Kind of give them some real-life experience, oh, you know, outside of just a classroom setting. Sure. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, we're going to have, uh, let's see, I got my youngest is probably eh, maybe around nine and up through teenagers. Oh, so, that's yeah, great. So yeah, we got a guitarist, um, you know, some singers, and 
Yeah, so it should be a great time. Of course, I'll be there to kind of fill in all the blanks. But um, I know they're super nervous, but that, that's good, you know. It's a great opportunity, I think, because there's not a lot of places to play around here, like outside of a bar. Yeah. yeah. So this kind of gets them a little bit of experience. Mm -hmm. um, plus, it's nice and early. I mean, yeah, it should, it should be good weather, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, yeah it looks like it's going to be. We're excited yeah. about yeah. that. So, um, Jessica, explain a little bit the library's connection, because when, when Jake first brought that and we first started talking about it, uh, before he took it to Teresa, the director at the Danville Public Library, um, one of the things I was interested in, again, is the stage mm -hmm. and utilizing that and, and draws to bring people in. So you and uh, Jennifer Hess, the assistant director, have been working on some things to uh, add to not only music, but the arts. Um, yes, um, our library is very fortunate to have um, people who work in local theater, yes. including Jennifer Hess. And so they use their connections to bring in theater groups to do like little performances. Um, for instance, this weekend we have the Red Mask Players uh, Children's Theater doing some scenes from Rapunzel. And they're going to do it like three different times so that... Um, like at 10 and then again at 11 and again at noon so that kind of whenever you show up for the market you're still going to be able to see their show. Yeah and they're on my they're on here on on the show next week to talk about that production but what a great opportunity for them to perform in front of an audience. Exactly. Still kind of working through some things that'll be great for them. Mm -hmm. that's, that's exciting and I know you and Jennifer have talked about other things that coming down the road trying to bring the arts to the to the farmers market which I think is a great opportunity yeah we're working with some of the other theater groups in town and Jennifer's uh, uh, head of the Dark Horse Theater Company so we're gonna get some get some good stuff in here and Jake that's one of the things about this it's you know it's about the farmers market but it's also about increasing opportunities to expose people to the various arts that we have in our community free Ex exactly how many just exactly. experience it yes and going on what Dustin mentioned a couple minutes ago beneficial for his students to come and perform and have that first time on stage that's kind of what how I envision the market from the very beginning giving people opportunity to come we had the open jam sessions at the uh, market when we were at the Kresge but now once a month we're going to have an open mic it's going to be the last Saturday of each month so anyone can perform because like you mentioned Dustin for young performers, they have to, you know, there's really not a lot of opportunity outside of a bar. So we wanted to create something where anyone of any age can come and perform. So on the last Saturday of each, of each month, we'll have an open mic where anyone of any age, veteran stage performer, rookie stage performer, can get up and perform and um, get an opportunity and get stage time in front of a crowd. A, fam a family-friendly open mic, I must say. I was say. just going to yes, say. Yes, but... I'm assuming we want yes, to be family-friendly. Yes, yes, of course, yeah. but, um, <laughs> you know, but... Uh, opportunity in front of a friendly environment um, of supportive people to to watch them perform for that. And I imagine that's any like it's music, like does as Dustin does, but mm -hmm. it's also if you want to get up and do a soliloquy. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yep. So okay, we'll be back in just a moment. Newsmakers fourteen ninety W D A N. Welcome back to Newsmakers fourteen ninety W D A N. Linda Bolton in the studio this morning with me today are Jake Aurelian, who we've had here for numerous reasons. Uh, because he's a very talented young man doing all Thank kinds you. of exciting things. Um, and but, but he's here today to talk about the uh, new farmer's market that opens up this Saturday. It's the old farmer's market, but with a new, yes. a new bid. It's <laughs> yes. going to be at the library. Yes. Back, we're going to have a farmer's market back at the library again. We're going to have performances and activities on the uh, stage that Julius Hegler so generously donated to the Danville Public Library. And we do thank him for that. Also here is Jessica Augustin, who is Outreach Director, and Jessica's working with Jennifer Hess, who's the Assistant Director at the Library, to bring the arts, uh, the theater arts, in as well on a Saturday morning. So it'll be music, it'll be the uh, theater arts, it'll be all kinds of things going on, as well as produce, if anybody can ever get in the fields and plant anything. <laughs> and also here is uh, Dustin Danger, who I just thought was a guest, but I just found out is like a big wazoo musician. Yeah. I need to get out more. <laughs> I need to get... So you've been to the Grammys? Uh, yeah, yeah, twice. Tell me about that. What's going on there? Uh, it was a lot of fun. So yeah, um, I worked at a bank for over a decade, and um, I just had this vision of me at the Grammys, and I thought, oh, that's strange. 
you know? So I kind of Googled Dude, it. you're living your vision? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah. Kind of looked it up and, you know, found out the qualifications. And I was like, you know what, I think I meet some of these. And then, um, yeah, I applied and a few months later um, got accepted. So left my job in October and then by January I was at Madison Square Garden. Wow. Grammys, and that, that was a year ago. So, so were you like pinching yourself all over going, I can't believe it? I still here. do, yeah. 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 Every, That's every day, every stuff. week is something like, yeah, just wow. unbelievable. So. I've always, like I said, I continue uh, all the time to be amazed by the incredible talent we have in this community. We are so blessed. While y'all running around <laughs> worrying about a lot of things, justifiably, um, but, but we... we we embrace the negative, and, and in reality, we got a lot of good things we need to build on here, so especially talented people. Yeah. So, Jake, we, we start Farmer's Market this Saturday. That's right. Uh, real quick, though, Dustin, we're proud of you. We oh, really, uh, I've, I've said it privately, and I'm going to say it publicly. We <laughs> yeah, are so proud so of you and your success and everything that you've accomplished, man. We yeah. really are. You're, yeah. you're fantastic, and he, you've been a part of this market since day one. Um, but, yeah, Saturday morning. Even if you have cut your thumb and you yeah. cut <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I'm not taking it personally. Um, Saturday morning, Summer Sounds and Farmers Market returns this Saturday, May 11th, at the Danville Public Library, our new home at the Danville Public Library. And we're running from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. So um, this Saturday, as you mentioned, our first performer, Dustin Danger, uh, and he'll have his Rebe Rebels Fair collective students with him, which I think is amazing. Uh, we'll have Red Mask Kids. They'll be perform performing Rapunzel at 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and noon. We also have Papa Murphy's Pizza. They'll be there giving away free pizzas to the first 25 kids, which is pretty fantastic. We'll have designs by BB with face painting for kids and adults. Uh, we're supposed to have plants and flowers for Mother's Day, which was kind of the idea at one of our early market meetings to have the market start the day before Mother's Day. And Cafe 13 will be there. And just speaking a moment about Cafe 13, they were partners with us from the, pretty much the very beginning of the market uh, downtown, Saturday morning, Summer Sounds, Farmer's Market, we were right across from Cafe 13 right, at, right. at the Kresge Park. And so the idea of leaving the Kresge, because we all love that lot, and we all love being downtown, even though <coughs> I think we all realized we had, you know, if we wanted to grow, we needed to move elsewhere. One of the, the heartbreaking things for me was leaving the cafe because we were so connected with them, and it was great for, for their customers to come to us and vice versa. But I'm happy to say that Cafe 13 will be joining us at, at the Danville Public Library for Saturday morning summer sounds and farmer's market. So that, that to me was, that made me happy because Carla and Jason are good friends, and they contributed so much they to our market. They've done a great job. They, they have, really have. They have. It's been wonderful to see that take off from from Java Hut yes and, and that's just great to have them have them downtown and building their own success yes uh, so so the reality is not been a great growing season yet <laughs> so probably not a lot of stuff out there I'm, I'm yeah. pretty sure Toby Brown doesn't even have uh, sweet corn yeah planted we'll see yet, what but, our what our farmers have on yeah. Saturday it, yeah. it'll maybe scant uh, for produce right now we'll see yeah but you know it gives you a great opportunity even though there won't be a ton of fresh produce to purchase. It's going to give you a great chance to walk around and yes. see how this whole thing is going to work and to experience uh, the the red mass stuff that the libraries. And again, Jessica, go back to this is a big part of this, the, the, the partnership with the library and creating um, theater art opportunities because there aren't, mm -hmm. just as there aren't a lot of places to go play unless you're in a bar, there aren't a lot of places to do theater unless it's right. a set performance. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, uh, and we're really excited. And it's like this wonderful coincidence that our summer reading for the state, the theme is it's showtime at the library. Oh, oh cool. So yeah. <laughs> it all really came together so that we can do the farmer's market, we can have shows going on during the market, and all promote library programming at the same time and it's it's just great yeah well it's always a great draw to have kids on stage oh yeah. for sure and, and you too yeah. and, you'll have, <laughs> and you'll have a craft right for this saturday for mother's day that's right we're gonna have a mother's day craft so it'll be that's, a surprise that that makes it that makes it even more special so um, a lot of activities for kids this yeah, Saturday. Yeah, so can, can you give me a, a rundown again on, on time so people know? Yes, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the uh, okay. Danville Public Library. And then and, the performances will be? Um, Dustin, you'll probably start around 
probably around the time um, we yeah, open. Um, yeah, I'm going to yep. try to start right at 9 and yep. just kind of keep it running. Yep. And then um, we've got the Red Mask kids at 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and noon. And again, the open mic is the last Saturday of every month. You could talk to Albert King at the market and sign up or go to the Facebook page and sign up. Drop an email in and you know let us know what you want to perform. And again, that'll be a family-friendly open mic for kids, adults, whoever wants to perform, new, new performers, old performers, whatever. Just get on stage and have a good time in front of a friendly crowd. Yeah, that's really great. And then it, and you know, you have the, you have the summer sound stuff on Friday night, and then you mm -hmm. have the summer sound and farmers market on Saturday morning. It's a great chance for people to come downtown and just enjoy the experience and and share some time together. That's really yes. cool. I'm excited about it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a break and come back in just a moment to Newsmakers, 1490 WDAN. Welcome back to Newsmakers, 1490 WDAN. Linda Bolton in the studio this morning with me today are Jake Aurelian, who has been the driving force behind uh, bringing the farmers market, the downtown farmers market, back to the Danville Public Library and uh, utilizing the, uh, the beautiful stage that Julius Hegler was generous uh, to create at the library. We're excited about that. Also here is Jessica Augustin, who is the outreach director. She and Jennifer Hess, uh, the assistant director at the library, are working to bring theater arts to the stage and then working with Jake for the musical arts. Dustin uh, Danger is here um, and his group uh, will be playing this Saturday even though he cut his thumb mm -hmm. and came yeah. on my show. <laughs> but Sing hopefully. something acapella maybe. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully he'll be healed up. But it's a wonderful opportunity um, to kick off the season Jessica's going to have crafts for the kids to make Mother's Day gifts, and mm -hmm. you'll get to see what the layout's going to be like. And granted, not a ton of produce, fresh produce yet, but uh, great to, to get down there and see all these folks performing. So, Jake, where do you where do you see this going? Uh, you've got for the you've already got musical acts booked through oh, the yes. summer, don't you? Yes, we're booked through August 10th, and the majority of those dates. Um, we were booked within 90 minutes of me putting it out there, which was pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, we were, like I said, we, it was August 3rd. We were booked through August 3rd within 90 minutes. And, you know, in the past, we've always had a great response from musicians. But at the same time, there have been a few times where I've been kind of scrounging and trying to find someone to play when everyone else was booked. But this was amazing. And uh, so you can go on our Facebook page and see all the performances. I will say on May 18th, we've got John McMahon returning. He's been a market favorite for years. And that's also going to coincide with the Armed Services Day at the Vermillion County War Museum. So that'll be fantastic. Two events happening side by side. Yeah, that'll and be great. that'll be really amazing for everyone involved. So, Dustin, tell me a little bit about um, what, a, what a gig like this means. I mean, you talked a little earlier because a lot of your students are going to be performing. You know, we, we think musicians just automatically um, sit down and play or stand up and play. Um, and we forget about all the hours of practice and we forget about what it's like then for a, for a musician to stand in front of people and play. Um, yeah, for sure, especially starting out. <clears throat> so, um, you know, you, you got to get over the nerves. Um, you're hoping you don't mess up, you know, at all. Uh, me, I'm pretty chill. I do it all the time. Well, so. yeah, but you've done it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's, I'll that's be all right. Thing. But for them, yeah, it's a great experience because then it's only going to lead to more comfortable feelings when they're performing and they're only going to get better, which in turn is going to help the music culture around here and hopefully push everything forward. Um, what's also nice about the farmer's market is just the time. You know, you can never, you know, Champagne has a lot of things, Champagne Urbana, where you can play during the day. Um, here in Danville, you don't so much. Um, I think like you miss a lot of crowd. You know, there's a lot of people who aren't going to go out at 9 p.m. You know, to hear a band. So it's kind of twofold. So yes, it helps the younger musicians, but then it also helps that other crowd that's not going to be late night have a chance to experience some of the music that we have around here. And Jake has, yeah, phenomenal performers. I know every single one of them. So it should be a really great season, yeah, especially for like music. It. it sounds like it. And Jessica, from the library's perspective, um, we're excited to have people coming down to to the library, and we're hoping that mm -hmm. they'll come in and enjoy what we think is a pretty darn fine library. Oh yeah, I and mean, we just opened our uh, new teen zone downstairs, yes. and we've got a new study room upstairs. So we're very excited to have people come in and check all that out. Well, and and we talk all the time. And uh, full disclosure, I am uh, president of the board of trustees, um, so I'm not a, I'm not objective. I don't even claim to be. Um, 
But one of the things we talk about a lot is making sure people understand how relevant the library is mm -hmm. in an age of technology, how important it is, and all the different things that a library is. It's not, it's not just a place for books. It's, there's stuff going on. Oh, yeah. I mean, we have programs all the time. And um, the children's department particularly, and especially now you know, for summer reading, they're going to have events and crafts pretty much every afternoon um, during the school year. And then come summer, every day, yeah. and on Saturdays too. So when they're, you're done hanging out at the market, come inside and check and see what we've got going on there because there's going to be something. Absolutely. Especially on those hot summer days when you need to duck yeah, in the air yeah. conditioning. Yeah, we, we have the air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> praise God. 25-year-old uh, building, we, we do say our prayers about that uh, all the time. So, Jake, um, a whole lot of things uh, planned. Um, what do you want? most want people to remember as they look at the summer and they're going to be busy. Yep, yeah, yeah, but we will be there every Saturday from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. And just come out, hang out, enjoy the music, shop with our vendors, support the local arts and the local produce communities. And uh, throwing it out there again about the open mic, Albert King is hosting a family-friendly open mic last Saturday of every month. You can sign up for that online on Facebook. And also, if you want a vendor spot, vendor spaces are free. So if you would like to be a vendor, as long as you grew it or baked it or made it yourself, no direct sale vendors. Um, you have to have made the product or grown it. You can you can sign up, get on Facebook, and email us, and set up is free. Yeah, I was going to say we didn't even touch on that. That's yeah. an important point because lots of places charge. Yes, yes, most places case, charge. You know, if you if you make jewelry, if you uh, make whatever. Yes. Uh, you can sign up and, yeah. and have space yeah. for free. And we have so many, we have such an eclectic mix of vendors. We have... Uh, but that's what yes, shoppers like. Exactly, exactly. We have fine art, we have children's books, we have my fiction books, we have uh, pies, we have baked goods, we have produce, They're we have dream catchers. I mean, we have such a, we have stained glass. It's just really, what we have is really amazing. And so I'm again, proud of our vendors and our vendor family. And again, this starts this Saturday. Weather's going to be good. Go down, check it out. Don't expect a lot of fresh produce, but that'll come. Yes. That'll come when they get the seeds in the ground and they, and they can grow it. But in the meantime, you're going to see a lot of really fun uh, activity and, and uh, performance arts. So join them and, uh, and enjoy it. I mean, be, be part of the good part of this community, which is a lot of talented people. So we wish you the best. Thank you so we'll much, and thank you for future. having us back. Absolutely, anytime. Join me tomorrow. Mike Alvey and Jeannie Cook will be here. We'll be talking about their recent negotiation on the NJCAA contract extension, and we'll talk about a little bit about the Danville Dance, too. So join us tomorrow on Newsmakers 1490 WDAN. I'm Linda Bolton.